Hey everyone, welcome to another episode here on MTG with Tio Pablo. I am Uncle Pablo, your favorite uncle who is always down to play magic with you and appreciates you just the way you are. If you would like to support the channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to reach out to me, don't forget to follow me on social media or reach out on Discord. Today's video was inspired by a video on the professor's channel over on Tolarian Community College, where he did a ranking of the top heroes in magic. The professor, of course, is a creator whose work I absolutely love. I feel that his work has not only made me a better magic player, uh, it has helped me get through some difficult times, and it has also just really made me a better person. So, professor, if you ever watch this, just thank you. In that video, the professor gave Gerard Capassion an honorable mention, saying that Gerard is kind of like an old-fashioned action hero, one of these... Um, you know, charming, charismatic, strong men who is seemingly invulnerable. If he's ever injured, it's mostly cosmetic. Uh, we never get a sense that his life is really uh, at risk. And while he may occasionally stumble or fall, he will always get back up stronger. The only time, I think, when we really see Gerard up against the ropes is when he's fighting Maraxus of Keld. And uh, in that fight, he is saved by Stark of Wrath backstabbing Maraxus. And Gerard, of course, gets really angry about that. Because Gerard, you know, being a civilized person, understands that consent matters, even in a situation as brutal as a fight to the death. Maraxus went into that fight one-on-one, -on -one, understanding the stakes. He was willing to take on that risk. He was not okay with being backstabbed by some punk. So Gerard really has the capacity to overcome his enemies. Gerard has the capacity to overcome any obstacle. And of course, in line with the action hero trope, he also has a tragic backstory. He is an orphan who is raised with a sibling, an adoptive sibling, who then becomes an enemy. He suffers many great losses, uh, you know, just being a person who lives in a situation of war. But through it all, he comes out on top through his sort of unbreakable will. But I really think that there is more to Gerard Capassion than just this. So as an old man that has been out of school for a long time, today I take joy in saying, excuse me, professor, I would like to add something on. You see, I think that Gerard's real struggle is not confronting his enemies or overcoming his losses. I think that Gerard's real struggle is in finding his own humanity. Because Gerard is not only a product of Ursa Planeswalker's Bloodlines project, he is the ultimate outcome of that project. Now, I suppose that if you're watching this video, you're familiar with magic lore, and so you probably know that Ursa Planeswalker is a hard-boiled piece of work with no morals, who conducted a eugenics experiment in which he selectively bred human beings in order to create individuals who would be essential pieces of his war machine against Phyrexia. Ursa is an artificer at heart, and one of his most hateful traits is his inability to see human beings as people. He only sees them as resources to his ends. I mean, Ursa married Caleb bin Krug just so that he could get access to the Thran Tome. And I think that his dehumanizing of the people around him is most clearly exemplified by his relationship with Baron, because uh, Baron uh, was the headmaster at the Tolarian Academy. He was a great academic, a major contributor to many of Ursa's projects. And he devoted not decades, but centuries to collaboration with Ursa. If there was ever someone who was a peer intellectually to Ursa, it was Baron. And then, at one point, Baron finds out that his daughter, Hannah, is also part of the Bloodlines project, which implies that both him and his wife, Rain, are also part of the project. So imagine the absolute heartbreak of believing that you are a major contributor to an academic setting, and then finding out that not only you're not even one of the lab rats you are a piece of equipment to the principal investigator so the story of baron is a really tragic one and baron you know was a child of prophecy destined to become the greatest wizard in dominaria and then there is this sort of sense of but at what cost 
he went into a Faustian pact with Ursa, and he faces the consequences which are terrible. So the Bloodlines Project was really inhumane, really immoral, and Gerard is a product of it. He is the ultimate product of it. So Gerard is basically a tool of war. Just like the Phyrexian obliterators, Gerard was designed to be an ultimate weapon of destruction. So Gerard goes into all these battles, and the real problem is that he doesn't really have a choice, because it is his destiny, it's what he was made for, and so to assert his free will, to assert his independence, to assert his humanity, if you will, he has to turn his back on the fight, which morally he cannot do, because that would entail abandoning his friends and abandoning Dominaria to its fate. So Gerard is trapped. And I think that a lot of Gerard's sort of immature and almost childlike behavior, of course we can read into, you know, he's just cool, but I, I think that that's also, that's also coming from a place of deep pain where he just doesn't want to come to terms with his emotions because he is, one, a person who's been through a lot of trauma, and number two, a person who is not even certain of their own humanity. But then something happens that really changes things for Gerard. And it is something that Ursa could not predict because Ursa is incapable of human emotions. And that is that Gerard falls in love with Hannah. And that is something that really is transformative for Gerard because now he has discovered his capacity for love and intimacy, which in a way asserts his humanity. It demonstrates to him that he is not just a tool for war. He is a human being capable of all the range of experiences of a human being. And then, of course, Hannah dies to the Phyrexian plague. And that, of course, can just be interpreted as the trope of the action hero whose you know, partner dies so that he has an additional driver for vengeance or whatever. But I think that there's more to it. The loss of Hannah really destroys both Baron and Gerard. Baron, of course, retaliates against Phyrexia by casting the Obliterate spell, destroying Tolaria and vaporizing himself in the process. And Gerard sells out to Yawgmoth under the promise that Hannah will be returned to him. He fights Urza in the Phyrexian arena, takes Urza's head to Yawgmoth, and is rewarded. But then Gerard has a moment of clarity. He sees through Yawgmoth's deception and decides to continue the fight. After escaping, rejoining his crew, and reboarding the Weatherlight, Gerard comes to understand that in order to activate the legacy weapon that will destroy Yawgmoth, he has to lay down his life. And if we look at the way that that moment in the story is treated, Gerard approaches it very differently from the way that he's approached every other challenge. He doesn't go into it with a clever quip, sword in hand. He goes into it with acceptance and peace and care. And that is because Gerard at that point has discovered and accepted his own humanity. He has understood that what gives value to his life is not his destiny as a warrior, but the experiences that he had with his friends and the love that he felt for his loved ones. At that moment, it becomes irrelevant whether Gerard is winning because he was created for it and that is his destiny, or if he is fighting because he morally doesn't have a choice. Yes, he's still trapped in that conundrum, but the thing is that he's outgrown it. He goes into that willingly because he has discovered humanity and concluded that humanity is worth saving. And that is where Gerard rises above both Yawgmoth and Ursa. And so I think that there is a lot of value in Gerard's story because Gerard is a character who hides his pain, hides his confusion, and then he realizes that it's not subverting against authority that gives you freedom. What gives you freedom is making the decisions that you want to make because you believe in them. And this is why I considered Gerard Capassion to be maybe the greatest hero of Dominaria and one of the greatest heroes in Magic the Gathering. But now I would like to hear from you. Tell me what you think. Tell me in the comments 
uh, follow me on Discord or message me through social media and let me know what you think. I appreciate your support. Uh, please like and subscribe. Um, this channel has been growing very nicely. We've developed a really nice community. I am not a professional content creator. I do this mostly to engage with friends and community, and I would love for you to be part of that community. So, as always, I am your Uncle Pablo. I like you just the way you are. I am down to play magic, so hit me up, and maybe we can link up on Spell Table sometime. Have a great day. Bye-bye.